All right, so first we'll have a look at the unboxing of the PX9 Android head unit. So it's a double DIN unit to replace that Columbus GPS unit that we've got in the Skoda Octavia. So you can see that the box here looks pretty good. It's just labeled car multimedia system in the top right hand corner. There's a sticker there which shows the spec. It's just handwritten. So the unit's pretty well packaged and I'm surprised that there is some extra tools there, some extra pry tools, which are pretty good. And I'll just show you the rest of the kit that you get inside. So this is the microphone and cable. And it comes with a TTRS or TT. Yeah, I think it's called TTRS. It's got three contact points on that microphone. You've got a couple of adapters here. One is a quad lock adapter, which is the one I'm showing now. That is a CAN bus converter. And the other one is for an older generation if you wanted to use it in an older generation. Then we've got the head unit there. So the main unit sealed up in a plastic bag and it's got a wiring diagram on the top, which is super helpful. And in a separate bag, you've got all the different adapter cables and extensions that you'll need in order to hook it up to various things. So the first one is for your video and amp. You've got another one there. So that goes to your microphone. This one's the GPS. Then we've got a USB adapter and then you've got the antenna adapter. Finally, there's the last piece, which is also another USB. So in this package, we ended up getting uh, two sets of USBs. One has two adapters on it and the other has three. The one that has three is for a USB out, so purely for charging. And the one that's double uh, is the USB in. There's another cable there which has the two video looking RCAs and a red cable, which is for the reverse camera. Finally, we wanted to add some extra more conveniently placed uh, USB ports in the car. And there are some blanking plate replacements that you can get, which are these units here. And you'll see how those are installed in the installation section of this video. Now we'll check out the unit itself. You can see it looks pretty good and it's got some strong mounting plates to mount up onto the uh, PQ35 platform or Golf Mark V Skoda 1Z platform uh, head unit mounting. It's got all the ports on the back there where you see the blue plug section. There's an antenna for the Wi-Fi. So this is a Wi-Fi enabled unit. Uh, you've got the other small plug section there, which provides the unit with power, also gives us the, uh, the speakers the sound. So it's all there. It's, you know, pretty well made. I'm pretty impressed with this one. Next up, let's have a look at the installation process. So obviously, first thing, you've got to pull apart the dash, which is pretty simple when you've got all the right tools and all the right tools are supplied. Don't use the red tool that I'm doing. Make sure that the pry tool you're using is a hook tool and you're able to easily remove that trim that surrounds the original head unit. Once the fascia trim is off, you'll see the four torque screws that need to be removed. So that's nice and easy. And then because we're going to be fitting those USB blanking charging ports, you're going to want to remove the heater unit as well. Once you've pulled that, just flip the unit so you can see the three plugs, which are simply removed by lifting up the red tabs. And then you can squeeze down on the little black section of the plug before you pull out. So make sure you don't force these out, otherwise you'll break the securing clips, which are the red tabs that you can see that need to be pulled out first. Little tip here, if the red tabs are a little bit difficult to remove, just use your pry tool to pop it out before removing the plug. Once the aircon heater unit is off, it's time to install the USB blanking plate charging ports. So removing the blanking plates are super easy. You just have to pull and these ports can go into any position that you want. 
we did shuffle them around a couple of times, so it's no issue uh, removing these blanking plates and putting them back on. The fitment of these units are a little bit tight, so just make sure you just push them in and they'll click into place. So there's one done and you'll see that you just simply yank those blanking plates out Then you want to feed your USB cable through that hole before you click the port in. Next part is to get rid of all the connections from the original head unit. So removing the antenna points here and the GPS. So again, this can be a little bit fiddly. So just use your plastic pry tools just to ensure you don't damage any of the locking tabs from the original cables or original connections. I found the GPS antenna plug relatively simple to remove. This double antenna radio plug was a little bit tricky just because the placement of the locking pin is in a really awkward spot, but just use your pry tools and you should be able to get it off. Cool, so the head unit's completely removed and now it's time to feed in all of the ports that will plug into the rear of the PX9 Android 10 head unit. So first up is just putting in the USB connections and you want to make sure that these are routed so that, you know, when you're installing the head unit, you don't have a mess of cables back there. So there are zip ties, oh, sorry, no, there are bread ties packed in with all of the cables. So just use those bread ties to make sure everything's neatly bundled together. So when you're ready to push the head unit in, everything kind of just doesn't foul the rear of the head unit, giving you issues on fitment. All right, so this is the next one. And this second one has the USB in tag on it. So that one's going to be the one closest to the driver. So it's really nice. All the cables do have clear markings on them. So just tidy that one up and you'll see that there are all these extra USB ports. So you can really expand these out to say, you know, have some hidden ports in the glove box or have some reach to the rear passenger area as well. There's the uh, video and amp RCAs that I'm putting in. And this is the quad lock adapter, which is super chunky. And you'll see that we did have issues fitting the unit in because of this super chunky quad lock and there's not much space back there since the head unit's main board does take up quite a lot of the housing but this is nice and simple the unit simply plugs in and then what i want your attention to focus to because this platform does communicate over can bus you're going to want to disconnect where this yellow and red plug is, which I'll show you in a second. Once we zoom in, here we go. So you can see on the left hand side there, there's a orange and red plug. So just disconnect that from its cable. The head unit will act as it should by turning on and off with the ignition. Next up, we'll have a look at the GPS and the antenna plugs literally have a look at them because this part was a little bit tricky. So we'll get back to that in a second and go to the head unit and start plugging things in because this was an easier section to do. So these plugs only can be inserted one way. They're all different shapes. 
So you can see that uh, the top ones here don't actually really click in very well. So just make sure you push them in as far as you can and that will be enough to make those cables connect to what they need to connect onto. The rest of the cables just push them in and you'll hear them click as I install them. Nice and easy. Top ones don't seem to click in. Now just having a closer look at how these bottom plugs insert, you can see that these ones fit much better and you can hear them clicking in. Whereas the top ones, they can you can definitely see they're sticking out a little bit, but that is enough to have them working. So in the end, all of these plugs took up each space in the blue sections. And now we can look at fitting the GPS antenna. So first step is nice and easy, remove this top pocket and vents holder by using your pry tools again. Make sure you're using plastic pry tools here and not screwdrivers, otherwise you'll risk breaking the trim. Now to make it easier to pop out, you can place your hand underneath the whole unit and you can see there that it all just comes out at once. And then you can just pop that onto the top of the dash. No need to remove any of the cables here because then you've got a lot of space to work with now. Now there's a little space here where you can stick the GPS unit on top of the vent conduit, which you'll see I'm putting here, not on the metal piece, but there's, you'll see where there's a plastic tubing and that's where the GPS unit is just being stuck on. I think I've read somewhere that you shouldn't stick these units onto metal and that's why I've stuck it onto there and it's the most horizontal spot that I could find. Uh, if anyone knows anything about that whole sticking onto metal thing, just place a comment in the comment section below just to give some clarification to that in piece of information. So just simply feed the rest of the cabling through. I don't like to bend this wire too much so I leave it uh, zip tied or cable tied in a circle. And then that just plugs in and screws on at the head unit. So the original GPS blue plug doesn't get used, so just put that away. Now we'll have a look at inserting the antenna cables. So clearly one fits properly, but because of the style of adapter they've packaged in with the kit, we've got these two separate ones when I know you can get ones that plug right in. But you can clearly see that with this second plug, there's no way it's going to push all the way in and be secure. So what do we do? Time to hack away, of course. 
I'm just using a good pair of pliers here to remove the tabs and shape the plug so that it can literally just be forced into its hole. With the pliers, I did find that a smaller pair was able to really shave off this little locking tang, but you can still see that because of the shape of the main part of the plug, it's still not going to be inserted. So I'm going to have to still cut away more of the plug. And what I did was I just used a Stanley knife to cut a notch in the two corners, which are away from the pink locking section of this black housing of the plug. Then I snipped those off with the smaller pliers. And you'll see that, you know, that was enough to have enough clearance with the other plug and to securely fit the two sections of the plugs in to that double antenna plug. So with those two corners snipped off, time to try and fit this in again. And you'll see that finally the second plug inserts all the way in and it actually stays there. So that's a pretty good result. Heck. Cool, now that everything's plugged in, it's just a double check of all of the pins, making sure that I'm happy with the wiring here and the quad lock adapter is secure. Time for a test fit. So you can see that it definitely does not push all the way in and this is where we had some issues with the fitment. And it's just got to do with the design of the vents back there. It's really, really, really tight. And on fitment number two, we still don't have enough clearance in the rear. So it's time to look into doing something else. So we hadn't plugged in the microphone just yet. So with this, I wanted to put it on top of the instrument cluster. So there are two Torx bolts underneath the instrument cluster to remove before you can pull it out. With this instrument cluster, it's really awkward. There are these two sort of locking middle tabs that need to be pushed out of the way before you're able to pull the instrument cluster out, which is quite different from the Golf and other uh, instrument clusters of this platform where you can just remove the two Torx bolts and then pull the instrument cluster quite simply. This is the first time I've encountered this, so I just really wanted to detail that step. With the instrument cluster removed, go ahead and feed your mic cable to the rear of where the head unit is, and then you're able to plug that into the adapter from the head unit. Got it. Now, as you saw before, fitment of the head unit wasn't working. And so we decided to move the quad lock adapter into this little space to the right of the head unit cage. And you can see what needed to be done is also lifting the uh, little storage compartment back up again so that you're able to maneuver the adapter into place outside of where it would normally sit and then feed the head units sort of slim plug through a little hole. And then you want to join the quad lock adapter while it's in this section on the side of the usual cage. Now with that quad lock adapter out of the way and just moving all of the little other things out of the way, you're able to push the head unit all the way in for a snug fit. Excellent. You can see my concentration face there because this was a super frustrating time. It took us a few hours to figure this out. So hopefully this saves you time. Now before buttoning up, let's just have a quick look at the different components. So you can see the blanking plate USBs are installed there. Just having a look at the fitment. It's nice and flush against the mounting plate. And here you can see, I think, no, we skipped that, but sorry, the GPS is up there. And this is where the quad lock now lives with that orange and red unplugged from its other side. Time to button things up. Let's go. All right, exciting time. So this is going to be the very first startup of the system. So you can see it's the Android 10 multimedia on vehicle device navigation system. A little bit weird that the VW logo is the first thing to see, but that's fine. I'm pretty sure that's going to be customizable. 
and it doesn't really take that long to boot up and you can see already that the doors are communicating that they're open and this is the OEM or out of the box interface that you get. Lovely, so now that the Android PX9 stereo has been installed, what I'm going to do is just do a quick run through of the features and I will try and configure it so that it matches the Skoda. So I'm just gonna turn the power on here just because I don't want the battery going flat while I'm playing with the unit. Um, now there's a reset button there that I want to tap into, but I don't have anything to poke into there, I don't think. Hold on, let's see if there's anything in the glove box. Nope. So I've just pressed the reset button here and you can see that the VW logo is on there. So that's not ideal because the car is not a VW. So I'm going to try and reset that to have a Skoda logo. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be in the settings somewhere. Now, I find this interface is a little bit confusing. There's a lot going on, but I guess it's just trying to get used to it. Uh, first so let's just find the settings here and I'm pretty sure it's going to be in the car settings um, and I'm looking at the PDF manual it's going to be in the factory settings where it asks you for a code which is 126 and then that should let me do it yes it does okay good excellent car so there's a whole bunch of different logos here which is really good so many nice okay let's just go to one here we go Go to apply. That good? Okay, good. Uh, I'm just gonna flick through these other settings just because I've not seen this before. So obviously I'm going to. We're not in Europe, so lucky I'm having a play in this section here. I'm gonna set that to Australia. Apply. Voice. That's fine. Can boss. Uh, cool, so it's just telling you all the different conditions of different components. Key study, don't know what that means. Other. A uh, whole bunch of different settings, which is pretty cool. Everything looks fine, so I'll exit that. Machine reboot. Yes. Cool, so hopefully this gives me the Skoda logo on startup, which is going to be the most ideal situation. Yes, all right, that's perfect. Keep it at that, nice and simple. We were trying to figure out uh, how to get uh, Apple CarPlay working. And, you know, until I looked at the ad on AliExpress, I didn't realize that it was a wireless Apple CarPlay. So we were plugging the phone is in as you saw before and just expecting CarPlay to show up as it normally would in an in um, regular say like Alpine or Pioneer head units but it's not like that in this PX9 head unit it's all done wirelessly I think with Android Auto it's going to be the plug-in type but uh, with CarPlay they have this like Z-Link app here 
which you've got to open up and I'm pretty sure this isn't going to work because what needs to be done is you've got to be hooked up to the stereo uh, whoops, via Bluetooth first. It's uh, not good. Okay. Then it's going to start connecting. And then you'll have your wireless CarPlay, which is really cool. The main thing that I'm noticing here is that the um, toolbar here, it can't be switched over from side to side. Look at all the police around here everywhere. That's bizarre. Um, and all of these icons, you can customize them in your settings. CarPlay, and it's this sort of weird name here, Zenova 413B4. Click customize and then like shuffling these around helps to customize this home screen, which is instant. So I'm gonna put Spotify there just because I use that. And then Waze, not there. Let's put it next there. Anyway, you get the point. So you use that screen in your iPhone to move things around. You can't move things around directly in this wireless CarPlay thing. But yeah, this is really cool. So that's your wireless CarPlay. You can see there that it's not hooked up to anything, but I think that's a really fancy uh, way to use wireless CarPlay. Now what I want to do in the system is apply a skin. And I'm going to need to hook up to some internet here, so I'm just going to turn on, whoops, I'm just going to turn on hotspot and fingers crossed the head unit picks that up. There we go. Actually, we'll do this one so it's there we go just so we've got a faster connection okay so you saw that I connected uh, very quickly so it's really really uh, convenient and simple to connect online especially um, when you've got your phone to hotspot to or your tablet and this should now let me connect into disconnected me for some stupid reason and it's because okay so now that has been connected let's go to Play Store and hopefully this lets me sign in now Ooh. all right so I have no idea what my Okay, finally, after all of that, oh, what's this? Play Pass Free, not now. We're in the App Store, which is displaying as it should. And the launcher I'm gonna get is this Nova launcher. And install.
nice and quick. All right, cool. So some other things that we've installed uh, in addition to the PX9 Android head unit are these little USB plugs down here. So this one here we've uh, plugged into for the high speed charge and this one is the data in. So I'm just gonna plug my phone in there. So it's gonna have juice this whole time. Let's open that and see what happens. Okay. So dark theme. I'm not sure what that means. What's this? And that. We'll do follow system. Oops. Yep. So a whole bunch of different things to configure here. Come 20, nope, let's do 130, that's good. Nice, let's do circles. Assistant Play Store, good. I'm sure you can change that later on anyway. Let's do. Alright, so this looks like the same as before. But I think I have to go into settings and change the way that the launcher works. So I'll open that. Alright, so that's changed everything around. Cool. So I guess now I can move things to the different spots, customize this thing which is in a really strange position. So I'll use launcher as home, let's do that as always. Ooh, did I just do that wrong? Um, Alright, so I've got to figure out how to use this launcher and make it start up so the OEM launcher is not the first thing to see. I want it to be configured so that Nova Launcher is the first thing that I want to see. But what are the things I really do like about this unit is the customization with the audio. So, um, not here. Where was... Well, first of all, you can see that there's a massive amount of options here with your network and internet, you can have different Bluetooth devices connected, I'm not sure how many phones, there's a different apps and everything that you can install. And I'm assuming this is pretty much what, what an Android phone would be like. I'm used to iPhones, so I don't know exactly how all of this works, but you know, it's gonna get to know it. Uh, so the car settings here is uh, how you uh, customize the unit. Uh, element here helps to change the buttons. So the panel light color is referring to these buttons down here. So you can see that they're changing as I press the different options. So for Skoda, of course, we're gonna go full green. Steering wheel keys, not sure how this works yet, but I'm assuming it's the way that you customize your steering wheel keys and then the amp. This is really really cool. Uh, we went for the DSP option with the PX9 unit and it helps you with this how many bands? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 band uh, EQ. Then you've got different uh, 
settings here and time alignment there as well so something that I've got to play with to make sure everything sounds good I'm not sure what their units of measurement are here but it's something that I'll need to look into and what I also really like it are the physical buttons on the bottom here didn't want a full touch screen just because that's annoying navigation so you can choose your app of choice for Navi uh, and there is a GPS um, that is included with the unit so you can see here that that's all working and then we go into extra settings so all these different little settings that you can play with and reset back to factory settings yes or no which we don't want to do so yeah the car settings is you know where you change the head unit settings and amplifier settings as well if you've got the DSP installed so obviously I don't have many apps on there, we just installed it yesterday, uh, there's still a lot of customization to do which I'll um, get onto now, S but another thing that I like is this sneak peek into the car. So we can see that you know it's got some information here in regards to the engine, the battery, the doors. You've got a washer fluid um, status, seat belt buckle status, handbrake. So if I undo the handbrake, uh, that's going to go green. And as the doors open and close, it shows up on this car here. So it'd be really good if that was a Skoda Octavia, but it's not. I guess that there's a different way to customize that, but not in this app. And you've got all these other uh, factory apps installed which we've not really looked into but you know everything seems to work really well in in the head unit the touch screen's pretty good it's I, can, I think it's resistive it's not a full glass I can tell it's a little bit soft um, but it's very responsive so I really do rate this head unit considering it's one of those Android Chinese ones um, that you know people don't really speak highly of but considering its price and considering its relative ease of install make sure you <laughs> you put that um, quad lock plug into this section here and then feed the power plug for the head unit through that little gap as we showed you uh, during our installation to save you headaches because that's the point where we were stumped for pretty much uh, two hours trying to figure that one little bit of the install out apart from that you know it fits really nicely as you can see it's got some excellent features YouTube works very very well when it wants to I don't know what's going on there um, and yeah it seems like a pretty good head unit considering the price it's not a thousand dollars but it is feature rich and there's a lot of customization to do. The wireless Apple CarPlay is pretty cool. Screen resolution and screen quality, the image quality is not, you know, 100% the best, but you know, for what you pay for and the functionality that you get for this unit, you know, it's hard to go past it. Hope you enjoyed that video guys. For more Skoda stuff, click into that playlist there and please remember to like and subscribe. Let me know what you think of this head unit as well. Do you have the same thing and what skins have you put on there or what apps have you put on to help improve your experience? Let me know. See ya.